442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Good Monday to you, football fans. It's room 442. I'm James Sharman. Sarah Peraria joins me here as usual. Sarah, mm. it was a weekend of yeah. great football, great storylines, some sadness as well. Um, it's love, hate as it always is. Um, we're going to start with love, as we do, because it's the start of a new week, you know? We need to start with some energy, you know, before all, all the negativity seeps in. Um, and there was plenty to celebrate, I think, this weekend in the football world, specifically the Premier League world. I'll let you start. Give us some love, a reason why you love this weekend. Yeah, okay, if we're going to start in the Premier League. First of all, I think this is a great weekend for football. I am coming into Monday looking back and being like, more or less really happy with everything like there wasn't too much that you know made me upset or whatnot so yeah great weekend let's start with Man City and Liverpool shall we first of all great football match overall quality from both sides really happy to see really happy to see VAR wasn't involved because we were really worried about that as well and how much do we love Guardiola and Klopp's relationship like seeing them at the end of the game I was like these two guys have so much class so much respect for each other too. And it was just like, oh, that made me feel really nice. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, because post-match, they had that great little chat, a hug. And then they got a little bit of negativity there. That's with, on my uh, hate. Don't worry. Oh, oh is it? You. Okay. So so we'll, we'll we'll circle back to that yeah. <laughs> later in the show. Because I thought Klopp dealt with it pretty well. He did. And, and didn't could have used that as his opportunity to have a go at Pep. But he didn't do it. But still, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a great match, I thought. And I think it really seeded Liverpool's credentials as a title contender. They didn't play their best in this match, I didn't think. I thought they were outplayed for much of it. But they still ground out and found a way. I thought the subs that came on, Gravenberg and Gagpo, looked really good. Um, and they found a way to hang on and tie Man City. And listen, that is a big result. To go to Man City and get a draw, they won 23 straight games there, for Christ's sakes, right? We know how great they are, treble winners, yeah. yada, yada, yada. So to get points off this team in this kind of match, I think says a lot for Liverpool and just where they're at in their, I won't call it a rebuild, but they're a very different team to what they were this time last year, for example. Yeah, no, I think so. I think it shows, though, that City do have some flaws as well. Granted, I don't want to judge too much on this match because of the international break and we know how that affects everyone like you could see it with darwin nunez as well by the end he was getting so tired so yeah. you know it's hard to judge these matches but i'm just really happy to see both teams you know like i think a draw was really fair here and like city did maybe could have won but i'm happy that they kind of have just that that equal ground because yeah it was it was really well fought from liverpool but overall just a great match what about Haaland? 50 goals in 48 Premier League games. The quickest ever to 50 goals. And, and yeah. listen, he scored in this one. He wasn't at his best, but he was fighting, I thought, in this one. He was really going for it. He showed, I think, leadership to a certain degree, a real tenacity as well. I thought he had a decent game. Um, and to get 50 in 48 games to start your Premier League career is just, it, well, obviously, it's the best ever. It's out of this world. It's better than Ian Wright who was the previous mark. I think he did it in 17 games more. <laughs> right? yeah. It says no. it all. It's, it's nuts. And you saw what it meant to him, that celebration. Like, he was just overjoyed. They showed Alfie in the stands as well. Yeah. Like, it was, yeah, it's incredible. It, it kind of, I feel like whenever we think of Holland, all these records are like, oh, another one. But when you really think about this one specifically, how you said it, 50 goals in 48 games, that is incredible. Really crazy. I mean, not many people do that, right? There's a couple of guys, but beyond, and you know who they are, mm -hmm. I, I, it just doesn't happen. You don't score a goal a game. Yeah. Players don't it's, do that in, in this era of football. No, definitely not. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm really happy for him because there was a lot of concern about whether or not he was going to play. Obviously, all the news with Norway this past week, um, mm -hmm. you know, not making it to the Euros, so... Good for Hall and time to shine at City and uh, focus ahead on this team because I guess Norway's uh, not looking too good right not, now. Not so good, yeah. But it's, it's, it's interesting with City, isn't it, this year? Because they haven't really hit their peak. They were better last year, but they're still well, they're in second place now. Obviously, Arsenal, um, who, who are 
also grinding their way to results, but they're in first place and deservedly so. But City still, that's what terrifies me about them. They haven't found that extra gear just yet. And you know they have it in them. Is it because they're missing Kevin De Bruyne? When he returns, this will be a different looking team. Now, what does that mean for Julian Alvarez, who's ostensibly playing in that position right now? Um, it's, it's really interesting. I think it's going to be an absolutely fascinating um, final two thirds of the season for a number yeah. of reasons, but one of which is City will they find that gear? Will they fall back in the old tried and tested excuse? Well, they did play a lot of football last year, they did win the treble. What do we expect? Or will they just keep pushing it? Uh, my, my, my gut tells me because it's Pep, they're going to keep pushing it and they will find that at some point. And in the end, they're going to win this thing. But I just think it's uh, it's a tighter race than, than perhaps most of us thought. I think it's tighter than we thought maybe for now. But I think give it end of March, I mean, end of April, early March, that's when I think you'll see City really come and shine because that's when you're going to see teams like potentially Liverpool, Arsenal, Newcastle, we've kind of already seen a bit of it here and there with injuries, with, you know, tired players, whereas City, they can have that, but then their bench is still these elite superstars that they can just bring in. And I think that's when it's really going to show, okay, this team is now going to start elevating itself above the rest. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. All right, my love, um, I'm surprised you didn't start with it, actually. I knew <laughs> because I, I saw your chat, so I knew you were going there. Okay, <laughs> okay well, thank you. You can the board there you're more than welcome to steal my thunder but um, <laughs> Garnacho's goal for Man United as they beat Everton convincingly in the end although we'll get to Everton because I tell you what they could feel aggrieved they didn't get three points in this game but yeah. that goal they were debating it on all the broadcasts I saw you know is it the goal of the season like how can you even debate is it the goal of the season of course it is yeah that was incredible we all love a good scissor kick right and the sheer ferocity of that that strike was absolutely something you don't see very often. Um, although I just tweeted out uh, the so Europa say, League. Bring that up. <laughs> yeah, Europa League. Mosa, uh, Sa, they just uh, tweeted out a goal from the Europa League this season, um, which might have been even better. But that's a different league, right? We're talking about Premier League goal this season. It was absolutely sublime. I, I, I just loved it. I watched it over and over, and I don't like United, right? I'm enjoying their decline. But that was just something that we'll be talking about for years and years. And maybe that's going to be that that kind of platform for this kid who's really a very good player. He's special. Yeah. To, I'm, to I'm happy to step. see that he was able to do that because in recent months, I've actually started to dislike Garnacho because of his antics. Like mm -hmm. he's not getting called to the Argentina squad. I'm like, I wonder why that is. Because clearly he's a talented player, but I'm just like, you kind of see him like a bit of a jerk. So I'm very happy to see like he is a talented footballer and I hope that he can hone his focus on that instead of kind of being this show off. Like, do you remember two weeks ago in the Champions League match, Man United against Copenhagen and he scored and he shushed the crowd and then Copenhagen <laughs> came back and won. And I was like, you're such a fool. But yeah, I'm happy for him because the talent is there. So hopefully we can see it grow more because yeah this kid is a is a little legend really and i mean the athleticism you need to not only the athleticism but the the balls you gotta have to mm -hmm. you know take a shot like that like you saw him winding up ready to go and i was like oh my god if he misses this good god <laughs> and, he did it. and it was great but um i saw you on twitter tweeted out it went from a 10 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10 all because the ronaldo celebration and some people took me seriously yeah. For fuck's sake, speak. Uh, it's so it's a joke. Yeah, yeah. It's a down. joke. So, oh, oh, haters gonna hate. Oh, you know that thousands of children do the exact same celebration. Yeah, I know. I yeah, know. yeah. I was, I was taking nothing away from the goal. I was having a little bit of fun with it, but people don't understand humor. I don't think on. on I don't on think Twitter. so. Not at all. X can't imagine why. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna keep watching that goal over and over again. Um, and I think it will stand. This, this been some great goals this year. I guess it depends what you like in a great goal, right? Some people like the intricate passing play. Yeah. Some people like the the breathtaking pace. Uh, some like the 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 you know thunder fucker from from That's thirty crazy. yards out. I love those myself as well. Those are crazy. But there's That's something crazy. about that you know over the top bicycle kick goal. It's just uh, yeah. Give me some of that every single time, please. Yeah. You mentioned the shushing, by the way. Um, did you see? You saw Trent 
Alexander Arnold's it's Shushing of the Crowd. Hate. It's on my hate. Oh, is it? Oh, God. I, 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 this is hate. The top of the list. All right. We have a good conversation. In the house. I'm yeah. looking forward to hate this week. Oh, no. Reason. No, there's still so <laughs> much love. So let's keep it going. Can yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep Newcastle, it going. Newcastle, please. Yes. Newcastle, welcome back after a bit of a rocky road there. And we were talking about, and you, James Sharman, actually said that Chelsea were going to turn a corner. And I'm really happy they to did. hell with him. I, I was happy to see Newcastle just <laughs> absolutely silence everyone. And Pochettino actually came out and said that this was Chelsea's worst performance of the season. And I can't disagree with him, yeah. but wow, Newcastle, man, when they play, they are so fun to watch. They are, even with all those injuries. Nuts. They're showing great depth. Yeah. That I didn't think they had. Right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're silencing us. You see that stat with Bruno Grimmarej? Um, he's back, you know, and, and another winning side. When he's he's missed seven games since arriving at Newcastle a couple of years ago now, and they've lost all seven games. Insane. He's back in there. Yeah, he is so important. I think he might be. I think he's appreciated. People know how good he is, but I think he's underrated. I think so too. As far as the hierarchy in the league, right? There's probably a few Newcastle players like yeah. Gael Almiron came back as well. This guy's a baller, but you he just is. don't hear much about it because they're Newcastle players. But yeah, it was the it was who was it? LaSalle scored, and then a minute later, Jolinton scored, and I was just like, it's all kicking off. <laughs> well, Jolinton should have scored earlier as well. He had an absolute yeah. sitter that he missed, right? Mm -hmm. um, LaSalle's is a great story as well. This guy's been with Newcastle for years, like in the lower leagues when it was all going wrong, captain the team. He's been that inspirational leader for forever with Newcastle. He lost his spot last year, and he kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting, and now he's a guy that's essentially an automatic starter. Yeah. He jumps into that starting 11, right? I love those stories. No, me too. No, it's it's so great to see. And yeah, I mean, if you look at the other side of the coin there, there's Chelsea and oh my God, like what is, how is this team going to get it together is the question. Well, apparently it's by missing a day off. Do you hear that, you know, post-match Pochettino was saying we had a day off scheduled tomorrow. That won't be the case. So We're good. all back in it. But then, do you see this? Um, there was Now, it's on X, so I'm assuming it's probably true, but I don't know. There was video of uh, uh, Jackson in the Villarreal room on Sunday. He, he went back there to Spain and was in the post-game celebrations in the room, all hugging him and stuff. This is Nicholas Jackson, um, who clearly, if there was training being... Well, a day off being cancelled, he couldn't have gone there. So I haven't done too much delving into that storyline, but maybe it was just Poch, you know, venting post match, and he got the day off anyway. Or this guy's gone rogue. I mean, can you imagine that they lost Nico Nico Jackson out of all the players? That's probably somebody that you really want. For goodness sakes, you can't <laughs> score any goals. Yeah, and no kidding. He says, Via Real, please, I'd like to come back. Like. That would be shambolic for Chelsea, especially because Christopher and Cuckoo still isn't meant to come back until what in the January. Or yeah, something. yeah. I mean, I, I, I've, I've seen nothing in the tabloids today about it. Maybe it's much to do about nothing, but I've just found it interesting. And oh, that yeah. whole concept of former players going back to their former teams in the season and still being mates, I'm a bit old fashioned. I'm not so sure about that. You know, <laughs> your day off, I guess, if it's day off, you can do what you want. But I don't know. A team that's struggling like Chelsea, optically, it doesn't look that great. Absolutely. That's for sure. yeah. I can agree with that. Um, Tiago Silva as well. Oof. Rough day. Rough day for the 39-year-olds. Yeah, I think he might be seeing more and more rough days, which is yeah. a real shame. You know, he's had his moments this year, but there comes a point, isn't there, in those the legends of the game, when someone's got to tell them it's time, right? Yeah. He, he's such a glorious career. One of the all-time greats, in my opinion, right? And it's hard to hang him up, but there comes a point where maybe you need to be a little bit of a push or a little word in your ear. Yeah. I mean, I think this would be the end for him, though. Do you not see this kind of being his life? Maybe he goes back to Brazil if he wants to and does, you know, a, a maybe. year there just kind of for fun. But I can't imagine him sticking around. No. I mean, do we, would he want to? This is a rebuild. And they're going to turn it around. They, I mean, all joking aside, they are going to turn it around, I think. Um, but it's not going to be seamless. It's not seamless. Mm -hmm. Does he want to really be part of that? When he can uh, go back home and join a big club, get a bit of glory. Yeah. But still at 39, what's he got to offer though at this point? I mean that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm like, it's it's amazing that you're still playing for a top level team in the Premier League, you know, 
at 39, but sure, is amazing. this is it. This is, this has to be it. <laughs> 39. I mean, just, that is incredible. Yeah, no, it really is. You forget how old he is. Cause he's just been there for like, he's yeah. just a staple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for, for so, so long. Yeah. So anyway, that love was kind of turning to hate a little bit for Chelsea. Yeah. That's, that's their fault. It's not our fault. <laughs> uh, some love here. Um, just uh, Aston Villa. Ollie Watkins. Watkins. He is a player, isn't he? He is a baller. That team is full of ballers. Um, to beat a Spurs team who actually looked pretty good yeah. despite all their injuries, um, I can see why they'll feel a little bit aggrieved that they, they should have been up two or three goals in that first half. But Villa found a way. And now look at them. They're in the Champions League spots. Are you prepared at this point to say they are a contender for the Champions League spots? Let's not go title just yet. It's a bit early. But for the Champions League spots, I, I don't know how we can say they're not. Yeah, Given I don't know. What they've done in the last calendar year, what they've done is, is amazing. What scares me is teams like you mentioned, Chelsea turning a corner, Man United, because these teams just have, you know, the experience. They have, you know, these these players that they can just bring in. They have the money and transfer windows and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But that's what scares me. It's keeping, like, consistency. And I don't think teams realize how hard it is until they're there and they go, oh, we really need to win every game if we're trying to stay up here. I would love to see Villa in the top four, but I'm still just, we're, I'm, it's that May, it's that, sorry, that February, March. That's when, yeah. like, that's when things go south for a lot of teams. And that's when you see the big teams, you know, thrive. So I, I hope so. I'd love to, but I'm still just a bit iffy. And it's not a Villa thing. It's just, you know, a club smaller than you know like the big whatever six or whatever it is yeah yeah i mean yeah precisely because it is important to acknowledge they are a big club but yeah. they're not a super club they can't afford yeah. to compete with with the the chelsea's or the man city's obviously even the arsenal's or, or liverpool's and, and right now you look at the table so arsenal on 30 points a point up in city liverpool on 28 tied with villa so there's your top four and i, I think it's I think I'm at a point now where I'm confident to say that Arsenal, City and, and Liverpool are going to finish top four, despite yeah. it being so tight. But then you have Villa, you have Spurs, who have surprised us all and, and will get reinforcements and will improve. Um, but then you've got United, who are just four points back of fourth. Could they turn it around? Stranger things have happened. They're the informed club right now in the Prem by results, not by performance, yeah. because, Christ, Everton, 24 to 6. 24 to 6! shots on united in that match right yeah. united are finding it away and giving credit right but um and then you have newcastle 23 points five back of villa right now they're not going to get worse yeah i don't think they're going to so. get better and, yeah. and sure they're having difficulty with europe that's clearly a case but they'll they'll learn to to um get through that yeah so your cat walk through the background there so i was gonna say you guys hear meowing he's <laughs> i'm glad that he's feeling better He's coming in. He's coming in. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. sorry. Uh, great podcast material, that. Um, so so Newcastle, and, and this in January, they're going to they're gonna spend. They can maybe just loan back all those star players from Saudi Arabia, right? So if you're a Villa fan, you're enjoying this, and, and I'd love to see them finish top four more than any other team outside, of course, and Liverpool for my, my one-eye bias there. But you look at Newcastle, and no one's writing them out of that contention just yet. And even Brighton won again this weekend. Look back to their their best where they should be right yeah, so yeah. it's still too early Way to too say early. that villa are perhaps a, well listen they're a contender they're in the mix yeah. but i don't think they'll finish there I think, i'll say yeah. that i don't yeah, think I when do. push comes to shove but they'll finish in the european spots yeah. some european spot whatever it is I and that's progress so. I right so. i think it's between them spurs and newcastle for that like yeah obviously now i'm writing off united and i want to but i should <laughs> I know. You never know what's going to happen there, right? Yeah. The new ownership comes in. Will you make changes? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Can I quickly give some love to the city and Francisco Camarda? 15 okay. years Yes, you old. can. I got, it's funny because he's yeah. in my hate list. But but you go, you, you, you give love and then later on the show, I'll say why I have my hate. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. So youngest debut in all of city history amazing for Milan he came on you know only played about 10 minutes or so but I just it makes you really feel old but then you really just look at like some of these young kids I mean we've spoken about especially at Barcelona several several players coming through the ranks but it is just it's it just gives you some you know 
excitement for the next generation. And it just, you know, it's, it's incredible to see, you know, young kids working this hard. And you think you're 15 and you played at the San Siro for Milan. Like, it's, it's really incredible for them. Now, I don't know how his career is going to turn out. It's way too early for that. I'm not, you know, saying this guy's going to be the best of the best. But I think it's just incredible for, like, these young, these young teenagers, basically, to be doing that. It must have been a, a great day for him. But we can transition slowly and get into your hate for that. Hey, you know what? I mean, you, you feel old? This kid, we're not talking about this kid. He could be my son. Like, he could be my grandson. That's how, that's how I feel. And that's, that's not crazy. that's not reason for my hate. I mean, it was a damn good reason for it, mind you. But um, <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. It is, and yeah, I'm sure it was an incredible moment for him. And I understand the love absolutely. <laughs> maybe a, maybe a new young star is born in the Italian Syria and, and that league is right now. So we'll, we'll get to uh, my opinion on that later. Um, all right, shall we take a break and then uh, yeah, get yeah. to our hate? All right, let's, let's take a break and uh, got a few a few. Like I said, they're not. Sc- seething hate no they're not they're uh, no they're not positive and they're for other reasons but anyway we'll get to that uh, right after this 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets that's a win welcome back to room 442 um okay so we ended the last block talking about that this kid Francesco Camada in the Serie A the youngest ever player in the Italian top flight and he was your love and I understand why I get it I get it. But my hate centers around not him. I mean, great for him. But just when is young too young? (laughs) Right? I mean, he's 15 years, eight months, and 23 days. You're you're a child still. He might be a mature child, but he's a child. He's a kid. Physically is one thing. And listen, you're playing against grown men. That is a grind. That is tough. But I would assume that Milan wouldn't have put him on the pitch if he couldn't take the, the physical duress, I would hope. But mentally, you know when you were 15, Sarah? It's only a few years ago for you, right? <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you're not developed enough, I don't think, to handle the pressures. Or maybe that that youthful naivety is a benefit to you. But it's not often you see these stories turn out well when kids start so young. How many superstars started out so, so young? 17 seems to be kind of the, the earliest. A Messi, for example, starts breaking yeah. through around 17. I think Ronaldo as well. It's not often you get younger than that, right? And 15. Yeah. I really have hesitation. What does he benefit from this? What does a club benefit? He's not going to play every week. So is yeah. this just going to sprinkle him in, in here? This is what it's like, kid. Now go back to the to the you know youth grade, to the reserves, you know, and, and give him the carrot. Maybe that's what it is. Which, okay, I, I see it. But I just don't know the benefit other than a great PR move by the club to, to give him minutes. I think there's like two ways of looking at this. So I completely understand with what you're saying about the development, but is it also a way that like, usually these kids that are coming through so young have put everything into their football. Their parents have, this is their life. So they're probably not drinking. They're definitely not doing drugs. So (laughs) you're you're thinking, I mean, that I feel like kind of happens when they start to get that stardom and then you can see that path turn. But I wonder if it's like a good way to keep them kind of in check. Like, you can expect that this kid is not going out on a Saturday night because he's got to play at the San Siro on Sunday. Well, he's you know? not allowed to. Exactly. Can't get, he can't get into the bars. <laughs> in Italy, you could. I'm sure they, they will not check you. But yes, that's, no, it's such a fair point. But you know what I mean? Like, I just think the discipline of the sport, that's really, I think, important when you do see these young kids because you're like, wow, they put their whole lives into it. They have probably no social life, no girl. Have they ever kissed a girl? Who knows? But like, just like in that sense, like I, I can appreciate it. But if we're talking about development, I'm pretty sure men in general don't develop like their frontal lobe fully until they're 25. Well, some would say I'm 49, Sarah. But you know and what I mean? Still, still not there. Well, that's the thing in terms of like just not physical, but like mental and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, then when would you draw the line? When could you say now they can come in and play? Because football is you know, it's such a young sport. You start playing, like you said, around 17 is when most people start. It's not like baseball, you know, you're kind of getting into the, go to the show at like what, 26, 27. Like you, like you're, you, that's your peak of your football career. Yeah. But even, even from 15 to, to 17 to 18, there's still a big jump though. Yeah. It right? is. 15, but... You are a kid. You're still, you know, you're, you're at home. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think it's too young and, 
like I said, what's your, if, what's your top then? Is it 17 and up, you think? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm trying to think of 16 year olds. Um, well, listen, Barcelona this year, 16 yeah. year old kids looks pretty good, and for Spain too, but very young. James Milner, he's an example, right? Guy that started at 16 at Leeds and he's still playing now in his late 30s. That's amazing. Never a superstar, but a good player, got international caps, a Premier League player his whole career. Um, but again, a guy very much with his head screwed on the right way. That's that's um, the biggest, that's the tell, right? When they get into that stardom around 21, 22, 23. Yeah. And then you see, okay, do you have a good head on your shoulders? Because this is going to be a lot and you're going to be tempted. But I don't know. I think that's more of a personal thing, right? I don't know if that maybe changes based on whether you start at 15 or 16 or 17. Maybe like right. If I look at Lamine Yamal right now, he's 16. He looks like he has a good head screwed on him. But that head mm. is going to be a different head in five years, right? Yeah, no, exactly, right? It could be ruined. It could be tarnished. Yeah, the it fame, could be. The adulation. Yeah, right? exactly. How do, you keep that, how do you keep those feet on the ground? You better have a strong leadership group in that room. You better that's have great people around you. Strong family, I'm sure he does. But that's yeah. so important. Yeah. I think it's individual though, right? Like it's based on the yeah, person. So it's hard I guess to so. say. But I do know where you're coming from, but I don't ever think that if this is going to change. In fact, they'll probably start playing them yeah, 13 year old kids. Probably. Like, age. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't it in the USL, Sacramento Republic, they had a, a 15 year old kid make his debut this year? Yeah. It was, it was, I, I think it's just a PR move for the club, right? They got a lot of press for it. Yeah. But I think they've got a lot of criticism as well. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, my, my question, I think, and the audience's question right now is, is how old were you when you started doing drugs, Sarah? Hmm. I've got a young age, 12. 12, <laughs> 12, 12 yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. Good for you. You're early starter. Yeah. Early start, early finish. That's I got in, I got out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, more hate from you, Sarah. What you got? Trent Alexander Arnold. I don't like this <laughs> celebration is what I've realized. It's not Trent. There's no hate towards Trent. The shushing in general? I think shushing is really rude to the fans and I get it. They're city fans, but I still think it's something that you just don't do to people that are coming to support and paying your wages. Um, I've realized this over the season. that I just think it's an ignorant thing to do. There's so many fun ways to celebrate. There's memorable ones that if you do it, you know exactly who you're thinking of, but I don't know something about the shush. I'm just like, Oh yeah. A bit of like a slap in the face to, you know, these people that are really just here to, watch and support whoever but i just think they're better than that i think trent is better than that like specifically him garnacho we'll see but I, I i don't like it so you think that's less respectful shushing someone than saying you're a shit fucking wanker because it, that's what he's hearing all game from all these fans who he's shushing the most awful abuse players, terrible though. abuse it gives them a right to. to just like if you did that on the street you get arrested. You get you punched. Scored a goal. You scored a goal on the team that, you know, they're probably supporting. That is your shush. Do you know what no, I mean? I, just I like, love it. Oh, uh, see, that, that that makes so much sense. Just, like, like, how long he stood there? He stood there. That <laughs> he makes... stood there so long. I just <laughs> I, I love it. And the smile on his face. And he even he's asked about a post-match where he goes, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I really enjoy. I'd love seeing their the faces. Fans. Yeah. <laughs> Dick. No. Did you see their faces? That there's an iconic picture, not... right? If your success was a picture at some point of you in front of a, a state, a stand, and you're celebrating, and then you see all the faces behind or in front of the person, right? It's a great picture, and there's one for Trent Will, and it's the the, the seething, spitting hate on some of these fans' faces. It's like, guys, it's football. Just chill. I think it's a bit of fun, honestly. I think it's a bit no, of fun. It Sarah. is. It's not that. It's not that serious. I just think, out of respect to. It's because it's fans. He's not going up to the other team. It's just them. I'd almost rather him do that. But you've <laughs> scored the goal. Like, you've made your your statement here. Have fun and just enjoy it. You know, go for the badge. Like, even that, because that would piss them off too, right? You're going for the Liverpool badge in front of yeah. City. But the shush, I just find it's a bit disrespectful. I don't know what it is. Something just – even Messi. Remember at the, at the Bernabeu and he held his shirt up? I'm like, they're going to hate him forever. But I was like, that's still better than telling them to basically shut up. Like, I don't know. Like, there's ways to do it that are maybe still as aggressive or as, you know, rude. Um, just sorry, not rude, but just aggressive. But they're not as rude. You're, you're, you're right. A right to your opinion, Sarah, even okay. though, as long as, as, long as it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I quite enjoyed it. But I know I know what you're saying. I get it. But just the, the hate that these guys hear and, and feel from some of these fans, I get why they want to respond. Yeah. There's other ways they can respond, which is worse. This guy, although there was a report in the mirror today that he could potentially be sanctioned for that, for inciting. 
fans, but that would be a stretch. I mean, is it, if, a shush, if a shush is inciting fans, then we've got some bigger problems to worry about here. Yeah, it's really right. Um, I might, my hate is uh, Mikel Atera and, and what he's doing to Aaron Ramsdale, who had a got oh. back in the lineup because. David Ray is officially on loan at Arsenal from Brentford, so couldn't play against his former team, which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it was um, But um, so Atera basically has to play Ramsdale, who was really clearly shaken and lacking confidence in the first half. Got better in the second half. We saw some of the gregariousness and the personality coming through. He looked much better. But it's just what he's doing to this goalkeeper. I don't like it one bit. He had he had a great year last year and this this you know return to glory so to speak for Arsenal. You then yank him. You bring in this other goalkeeper who's very good, but isn't that much better than Ramsdale? Different kind of goalkeeper. Yeah. And just seeing how you're seeing a guy's confidence being broken down, I, I, that that I don't like at all. I feel for Ramsdale. I do, but I don't know if that's Mikel Arteta's fault. What's he going to do? Not play him? He can't play Raya. He's got to play. Like you got to be ready. I think True. it's just it's an unfortunate situation. I I just. I'm confused about it as well. I'm curious to really know like what's going on in the dressing room because I agree with you. Ramsdale had a good season last season. He has shakes though. It's like when he has those moments where mm -hmm. he loses his confidence, it he blows up a whole game. So maybe that's why, you know, not great with his feet. But like you said, David Raya, he's a bit better, but he's not much better. But I just think it's an unfortunate situation because yeah, he's lost his confidence for sure. And that's going to affect the way he plays. So I think that's why Raya has been getting the start. But he had to play him today and yeah it's just it's unfortunate but they they won they kept a clean sheet right so yeah. i mean maybe that'll i know it will help him right but again he'll be out of goal again this coming week it's gonna be yeah it's it's a weird one there. it's a weird one because after last season you did think like oh yeah like arsenal fought themselves a keeper here yeah it did right exactly that was not the weakness and again you're, you're bang on though i mean he's a professional he shouldn't be just given the number one jersey just because. Yeah, everything can always improve, right? And he's he's got to deal with it, yes. But I just wonder if it's been handled that well by his, his manager. That's all. Because one thing about Ramsdale, I always thought was he was uber confident. He mm -hmm. had swagger. He was almost cocky as well. Yeah. But that maybe shows how fragile the ego is. That's sometimes. exactly it. I think it's difficult. Exactly. Um, any more hate from you? Yeah, just the Darwin Nunez we talked about it at the top of the show. So I'll bring it up. Just like, I would find it all so unnecessary. You saw the beautiful moment between Klopp and, and Guardiola. And then Nunez comes in and clearly has some words to say with Pep. And you can see Pep kind of going like, trying to explain like he wasn't getting aggressive. But then Nunez just, you know, macho man over here. And I'm like, I get it. You're tired. You've traveled from South America. It's been a long game. Well, I just find so many of these things are unnecessary. But like you said, Klopp dealt with it really well. And I think that's also really respectful. But Nunez, that's Pep Guardiola. Sit the fuck down. Like at the same time, Pep, Pep, walk away. Yeah. Take the high road here. Well, you could right? tell he was, he was, he was trying to get back at him. He, well, he looked like I mean, I didn't know, I don't know if there was that like statement that came out of what they said, but Pep was like looking like, what do you mean? Like, I don't know. Like it looked like he was trying to, you know, get mm -hmm. that answer because he was confused. But yeah, too, Pep, like, you're better than that, walk away. But I just thought like I was like, oh, 1-1, one, one. okay, it was good football. Now they're, like, the coaches are respecting shit. And I was like, oh, just, just turn the TV off just before it goes out. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I know. But I think you're right. It's a young guy, bravado. Yeah. Nunes was probably in the wrong. I, I don't know. Like I said, hasn't been divulged what was said. Yeah. But in that situation, the, the, the legendary middle-aged coach needs to just take the high road and just say, yeah. all right. Fair I'm just going to walk away, whatever, Darwin. Maybe we'll chat about it in, in a few minutes in the locker room behind closed doors. But, yeah. But I know it was a little bit ugly. But the game needed a little bit of ugliness, I thought, because as much as it was this tenacity, those two teams don't hate each other. And, in yeah. fact, a bunch of them got the same plane home from South America. All right? And you know they're not – in the old days, they'd be like, you know, this team over here, this team, they're cliques. But these are all buddies, right? Modern well, football is the way it is. Yeah, at the end of the match, though, all the players stayed out. They're all hugging each other and stuff. And I was like, this would never happen if this was Man City and Man U or Man U and Liverpool. Like, I was just like, mm -hmm. this is like it's a it friendly was, rivalry, isn't it? Yeah, it is a friendly rivalry. And I think it's because they, the, both of them, they don't have that, you know, true historic rivalry like a Man U and Liverpool. But mm -hmm. they've been the two biggest clubs in the league for the last five or six years now. And it's been a race between the two of them. And I think there is like this respect being like, 
if it's not you, it's us, right? All right, buddy, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. there's buddy. definitely respect there. Yeah, that's exactly what yeah. it is. I think you're right. Also, and the managers do have such mutual respect for each other. Going back to They're Germany, the best coaches in the in the prem, right? Like, yeah, there's got to yeah. be respect there. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Um, my my hate it's not really hate. It's it's a bit of sadness. Terry Venables dying. Um, at the age of 80, uh, for those who don't know, Venables was a legendary manager for the England national team, also for Spurs, a couple of other clubs in England, but Barcelona as well, where he's he's very respected. Um, just a huge personality, and all reports, uh, a really great guy. And night, year 96 was when England was kind of redefined in the way they played football. They came close. They didn't win it, but that was an amazing summer. And Venables was this progressive tactician, very non-English in the way he saw football. And yeah. I think set the blueprint for a lot of English coaches saying, listen, we don't just need to be 4-4-2, knock it long. Yeah. We can play a more continental style. And that's why he went to Barcelona. And Pep was talking about as a 15-year-old being at Barcelona and then interacting a little bit with Venables and studying the way Venables coached. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, it's always sad when a legend dies, of course. Yeah. Uh, and just saying that I remember this guy very fondly. Yeah, I mean... It's weird, right? Like it just, it's with Sir Bobby Charlton not too long ago now too. It's mm -hmm. one of those things where, yeah, you just remember like everything they've done, how they've affected the sport and it's, it's, it's incredible. But you know, we're just kind of getting to that point. Like there's not, not to sound, you know, but 80 years old, that's, that's pretty old still. Like, you mm -hmm. know, um, it makes me, it puts into perspective though, that like, I'm going to be at a point in my life, hopefully where one day all these players that I've watched my whole life are slowly going to just pass away. And I'm just thinking, it's just, mm. it's just crazy. It's crazy. But well, yeah. You've, you've already written off Tiago Silva. So. <laughs> Don't just respect Tiago Silva like that. I never did. No, but uh, yeah, great, uh, great coach. And I really like what you said. He, he was able to change the way England thought about football, which I think has made England – a lot more appreciated by people that aren't English because that very, yeah, 442 aggressive down the line. It's boring to be quite frank. So, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. yeah, he opened up a lot of doors for them. But, yeah, unfortunate. Everyone dies eventually, Sarah. It's one next? fact we cannot escape. Was that? <laughs> I said, who's next? I am sure. Well, let's, let's do a death pool. Football death pool. No, let's not do that. <laughs> we know what is dying. I think probably my my hopes of winning four four two. Oh, it's fine. Today. Mine have just down. Was it down. bad? Yeah, it's been bad, eh? Oh man. Well, listen. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll we'll check out our four four two picks dot ca. And what was another challenging weekend? Four four two is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. It's time now for four four two picks.ca. And we did talk about it on Friday, Sarah, that it could be a challenging weekend. It could be a great weekend. Was it, ever? Then, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, man, there were some some results this weekend, a great weekend of results, actually. Um, some wonderful moments, of course. But where are you gonna focus your attention on, on what was so far another paltry performance from us experts? Yeah. Oh yeah, just horrendous. It's, it's been bad. It's been bad. But listen, after international break, I'm not even taking any of this seriously. Let's talk about Brighton because they finally won a game and it looks like they could be back. And that makes me really happy. Shouts to Forrest though, for really like clawing their way and trying to, you know, keep that up. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to see Brighton kind of looking back to their old ways and Ferguson getting on the board there and just, I'm happy. I want them to be a team that's competing for, you know, at least Europa. And I like them in the mix with that Spurs, United, Villa, um, you know, whoever else I'm forgetting right now. But I, I like I like Brighton a lot and I'm happy that they've turned a quarter. Yeah, unlike other teams we could mention. Chelsea, again, they did it to me. Just after I say the turn of the corner, they, they blow and get smashed by Newcastle. But I'll focus on Newcastle, sorry, on Liverpool against Man City. 1-1, one, one, uh, a, a really intriguing match. City was a better team in this one, but the Reds showed that they are very much tight contenders by hanging in there, um, despite a very unlike Allison performance. His distribution was really poor in this one. But that they found a way to get an important point on the road at Man City, who won 23 straight games at home. Liverpool are very much contenders. That is for sure at this point. Um, I give respect to Aston Villa as well. Big win over Spurs in the top four now. Arsenal, though, beating Brentford in first place. So quietly... Arsenal are back in first place. So good for them. I think the, the race is really heating up. It's still 
you know, a third of the way through the campaign. We understand that. But, man, it is so exciting. And uh, we're still head and shoulders above Albert in the leaderboard, Sarah. Um, but that being said, that the gap could be closing. It wasn't great weekend for us this has been 442picks.ca subscribe now it's never too late for you to get in there and a chance to win a maximum prize of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. and by the way it's free to play 442 is brought to you by north star bets that's a win